I feel like um, you were you made the very wise decision at one point to focus on acting. Was there ever a thought to ever what go are you back saying into about music? My music career? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hold on. I Was got there? one song. I just recorded a song. Let me play this shit for you. Before we get into our interview with Mark Wahlberg, make sure you subscribe to the KFC Radio YouTube channel so you don't miss any other interviews. We got comics, actors, entertainers, all sorts of A-listers. Don't miss a single one. Make sure you subscribe. Here? Yeah. Yeah. This is a makeshift shit you guys got. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be, that's for certain, man. <laughs> We've, uh, this is the upgrade. Yeah, this is this is as good as it gets. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey listen, I uh, I don't like spending money for the sake of spending money. You know, I think uh, less is more. As long as you're pushing out great content, it's the name of the game. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, the, the the shit that we used to do back in the day when it was like you know recording off of a phone or just yeah. I was in my daughter's nursery like yeah. filming is almost better than than this shit. You know? Yeah. Well, I tell you, I went to. I went to go visit my brother and I went to Wahlberger's headquarters mm -hmm. and you swear it was fucking like McDonald's. It's like, you think it's a $100 billion business. They were fucking spending excess everything. It was like all <laughs> branded and fucking all this merchandising, giveaway shit, TVs in every room, TV in the kitchen and the bathroom, three kitchens. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Fired a bunch of people. <laughs> <laughs> Shut it down. Damn. Mark like, no. Wahlberg rolling well, like Grim Reaper. <laughs> well, when there's capital calls, right? And Absolutely. You're the majority owner of the company. Who else are they, who are they calling to fund all their shit? <laughs> right. I mean, it's not, there's no money tree in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> we want to make money. People, man. Nobody cares what the office looks like. <laughs> it's true, man. So Good office, burgers, right? I literally operate my whole, my whole, all of my offices, all of my companies off of my cell phone. That's it. I don't have need. offices and overhead. It's just ridiculous. Just sell the burgers, dude. Yeah. Make good movies, right? Yeah. Exactly. The new movie, uh, exactly. Uncharted, is, uh, to say right up our alley is a gross understatement, dude. Nice. It's, uh... We were saying it's like part Indiana Jones, Little part fools, Goonies, I, part I, I saw it last gold, night. I saw it last part, night. Part uh, National Treasure. I mean, just like a great combo of all that fun stuff. Yeah, that's what I loved about it. I mean, I've made movies, but all the movies we try to really ground in reality. And this is like... Like The Happening. Well, that... <laughs> some, things, some things happen and turn out the way you want, some don't. But I do want to take a second to apologize to M. Night because I'm a huge fan of his, and he's one of the nicest guys and certainly one of the best directors that I've worked with. But the, that one didn't work out as well. Um, and some others, you know, but I do have... I mean, if we were talking baseball stats here, I'd be in the Hall of Fame. For Absolutely. Sure. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you bet 300, you get in. I've, I've had... More good ones than bad ones. Not but, even a fucking well, oh, yeah. question. But it's, but it's tough. It's yeah. tough. You know, it, it's hard enough to get a movie made, never mind make a good one. That's that's the big challenge, mm -hmm. right? So, right, right. So with this, you know, we had something, but you've already seen it before in Indiana Jones and all these things. So the way to elevate the material is really to have great chemistry with me and Tom, mm -hmm. have some banter and some humor that kind of made people much more interested. Is that is that where you, like, you kind of started that with you and you were trying to bang him? With the uh, yeah, that was the, a wild one. The, oh my god, that was a wild one, like, dude. Again, I'm like, <laughs> he, he, he started, you gave oh, mate, you know, I'm so sore, you know, I don't want to look out, but I'm stretch and all this, and I'm Spider Man, it hurt my leg. And I said, Oh, wait, dude, I have something for you. I give the, a power play pulse massage gun, I and mean, it says it on the box. And he's like, Oh, thank you. And I'm like, You know, he's come up to my house in an Uber, so I'm like, Let me give you a ride to the hotel, and it's like. He didn't tell me till after. <laughs> and we could tell he was acting a little bit strange, but it was like, then all of a sudden he's like, sex toy and all this. I'm like, what? what? <laughs> Where? <laughs> I, well, clearly this is him having a, uh, you know. Yeah, he's the one that went so, there, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. was like, <laughs> trying to help the guy out. You know, what are you going to do? It's, what kind of sex toys is Tom Holland using? Like, yeah, looks for at him, real. Like, I just look at the massage guy and I go, that's not something I You use one of those things in that way. <laughs> You're going to the hospital, dude. <laughs> Shit's at like 2,000 RPMs or whatever, well, man. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't uh, expect that one, that's for sure. <laughs> he's, uh, he's on a high right now. I mean, you two together has got to be a scene when you're doing press and premieres and walking around together. I mean, that's... Uh, yeah, it's cool. Look, here's the great thing. We, we, we just did a TV show together. I came outside. There was some young people out there, and they, he was already kind of signing stuff, and I just got in the car. And let left. him let the kid do the work. Yeah, yeah. let him yeah. do his thing. You know, <laughs> yeah. I think um, you know I'm more like a consolation prize. What they want the old guy for, which is fine. I mean, I've been there and done it all. Mm -hmm. That was what was so easy about going from because I was originally you know cast as Nathan Drake, mm -hmm. 
And I never really, they never called me and said, oh, by the way, now you've aged out of that part. Yeah. We want you to play the older guy. They just sent me the When script. did they cast you as that? Uh, David O. Russell and I were doing the first uh, version of it in 2009, 2010, right? After oh, okay. So, wow. wow. Yeah, so it was me and that makes more sense. De Niro yeah. and yeah. Pesci. We're going to kind of do this kind of whole mob robbing, you know, museums and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then... A bunch of other filmmakers came on, and I was loosely attached. And then, you know, they just called recently, and they're like, all right, we're getting the movie going. I was like, cool. And I was like, but who's the other guy? And they were like, Tom Holland. I was like, what? I'm thinking, you know, maybe we get De Niro, or we get Jack Nicholson one more time, or Tommy Lee Jones, or, you know, right. Brian Cranston. And then all of a sudden, they were like, Tom Holland. I was like, for what? <laughs> and then I was like, okay, I get it. Yeah. I'm the old guy. Was there like a moment, like, was it kind of like a pause? Like, maybe Mark will pick up on this on, by himself. <laughs> like, I just, he's, I he's just laughed. Parts. Yeah. I laughed and I was like, right away, I was like, oh my God, I got to, I get to do a lot less of the stunt work. <laughs> um, you know, I'm barking orders from the helicopter. And, and, you know, for me to try to play, because they wanted to find a, a cool way into the, the movie, uh, satis still satisfying the diehard gamers, but mm. at the same time, introducing the world of Uncharted to a whole new audience. Right. So, and Tom's a little bit younger, and he's supposed to become Nathan Drake at towards the end of the movie. And I'm supposed to become Sully with the mustache that right, everybody right. knows. So I was like, yeah, it's fine, you know. Um, Dude, it would have been pretty ridiculous, me, you know, limping <laughs> around the whole time. Be, you know, the, <laughs> I mean, you remember like. I don't know, like movies like The Irish. I was gonna movie. say your boy De Niro oh, was, it was. It was, you know, a I square love them, but, that one. but yeah, I mean, the guy was limping down the street. Yeah, it was mm. tough scene. <laughs> is is it tough? Like you, you mentioned, like like keeping the gamers happy, and I think you even getting said in it with last the video night. game world. I mean, it might yeah. be, it well, might be got, pain in the ass, but got, it's huge. Yeah, you got the video game world, but the thing is, the difference between like video game world and then like you know comic book world is that these guys were the characters because they're playing the game so they're in control of Nate and Sully yeah, and so true. for them to kind of you know allow us to go off and you know do our version of it we wanted to make sure that we satisfied them as well as bring a new audience yeah, yeah, so yeah. that was de definitely mindful of that that's gotta be fucking stressful though like, it's like, stressful. It's not as it's not as stressful as do, playing Mark Cottrell in a movie, you know, and he's standing right there ready to freaking kill you if you don't get it right. But but it's stressful. Yeah, I always feel an obligation and responsibility to get it right. Anyway, so. dude, I'd almost rather get my ass kicked by Marcus Luttrell than have like video gamer video nerds on you. mad at me on Twitter. <laughs> that's a man. That's like, a man who's never oh, been in a room with Marcus Luttrell. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's yeah. And that's a guy who spends too much time on his phone. I've never, I've never, I've never been in fear of somebody on a telephone. Or I, I don't read this shit anyway, so I don't even know where to find it. That's a good way to be. First of all, calling it a telephone. I've never is a even good start. I've never even stay off that shit. I've man. never even shopped on my phone. Um, I just figured out how to text recently, email. <laughs> and and multi FaceTime is like my new discovery, but getting people angry on the phone it doesn't really. Well, the 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 last time I think you uh, you really set the internet on fire was the your daily schedule. Yeah, um, starting at two thirty in the morning like an absolute lunatic. Yeah, well and, you know and what? Sprint golf. Some that of was, it. That some, was <laughs> some of it was a little misinterpreted, and I think because I think at one point they had me taking like an hour and twenty minute shower. <laughs> <laughs> at least somebody interpreted that. I was like, what the fuck? Are you talking and no, I take about? those too, Mark. I get it. I was like, no, I, and I don't do that all the time. I am back on that schedule now, and like this morning. So were you up at two thirty today? I was up at. 2.45 New York time but we literally got we arrived yesterday so uh, we were on LA time so right, I've right. got we had those guys to open up the gym for us at 4 o'clock in the morning <laughs> and every single person that was with me was absolutely miserable I'm sure yeah, they so were I literally dude. had my yeah, guys everybody I said, with get, you a must video, hate you. get a video of these guys in their faces because they were all just miserable and so I was so you, excited you're, you're to be in there and you're like you're ready. It's I'm not ready like you're dragging yourself out of bed. You're no. like, let's fucking No, rock. I mean, some days are easier than others, but I am more motivated and driven now than I've ever been. I feel mm -hmm. like, you know, I actually have an opportunity to be successful in this business. And oh, I you wanna... think so? You got a chance? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This, you know, <laughs> that is my approach. After this, this, uh, this uh, appearance here on, maybe we'll put Mark yeah, Wahlberg once I show, <laughs> Maybe you guys, up, you know, this little operation this, called Mark Wahlberg. This closet that certainly has to be, you know, I mean, I can't imagine the fire department or health department is going to shut you guys down. But no inspections have been passed. This is nice, like... You came in kind of clowning it, and I was like, oh, I thought this place was nice. Shit. It's yeah. like the best we've we're ever just, had, We're man. just realizing it I sucks. Told God. I just came from Sirius XM. They got, like, you know, expensive yeah, I shit. I guess over it's, a yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit different. It's a little different. But all good. It's probably, you know, they probably have a bunch bigger uh, expenses. Well, all that overhead you talk about. Yeah, they got I, TVs I, everywhere and shit. All we need is a microphone, man. I promise man. you. Uh, I, you know, all the stuff that we're doing. And I pride myself on it because... 
you know, for me, I now have just started financing my own films, and I really want to own everything that That's I do. That's the big time shit. But yeah. when I had, when I did go to investors for different things, you know, people now are starting to buy into people's production companies and buying content, and you know, got venture capital guys going back into the entertainment space. Before they never went into the entertainment mm. space because they always lost money. Right. It was just a vanity play. Like if they wanted to go to the Oscars or the Golden Globes or go to premieres, and they just had a few money, then they would invest, but they wouldn't expect to see any return because it was all smoke and mirrors mm -hmm. and trying to audit, or, you know, uh, a studio. It's just craziness. But we always prided ourselves on making real money for our investors. Like if you spent money invested in us on a movie or a television show, we didn't pat our pockets with salaries and stuff like that. We would always share in the upside and make mm -hmm. sure that people were successful. That's the only way you got to do business over and repeat business. So I think now people are getting it, but you know, why waste money in excess? So yeah, did, you, did you like to invest in us? Ooh. Possibly. Yeah. I don't know. I'd have not to, bars. You can just a book. We'll, we'll, set, we'll leave. We'll get the fuck out of here. We'll Whatever go. you want. Oh, you guys yeah. could come with us. Yeah. How about yeah. They said you guys are the hottest ones over here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that, but I'll take it. Uh, how about just give, just give me like 50 grand? Oh, that's easy. <laughs> yeah, I'm on a crusade. I used to ask everybody for 50 grand. Just give so me that ring. We'll give you 50, yeah. 50 and a watch. Don't worry, we're going to watch too. <laughs> yeah, that ring is no joke, man. It's, putting it's on just for, a wedding band. It's yeah, wedding yeah. Band. usually everybody's got that rinky dink shit. You're walking around. I am fucking married, man. <laughs> I feel like you, uh, you, you know, despite a huge career and massive success, you kind of still stay. I feel like you're grounded, like you're a normal dude. Is that like a thing you make an effort to do or just kind of always been that way? I just kind of am, you know? Yeah. I mean, I come from the real world. Right. I was always prepared to go back there. I never really felt like, I don't know, this was going to be sustainable, but I would really? I would work as hard as I could to maintain it, and I would never do anything to screw it up, and I'm always willing to outwork everybody. But I'm always willing to, and I would, knew I could go home with my head held high. And, uh, you know, I, I, I take pride in what I do for sure, but, you know, at the end of the day... I'm just a regular guy. I got there's there's much more important things. There's much more, there's much, there's much more important course, things going on. Yeah, you think about yeah. it, right? In the grand scheme of things, like I do a lot of business in Middle America, right? In Middle America, and people have real problems and real issues and different things that I can relate to and identify with. Other people lose touch with reality, or they've never really lived in the real right, world, right. right? And so I don't know. It just it just keeps me grounded and keeps me level headed. And do I think I'm as good or better than most of the people that I work with? Absolutely, because I'm willing to go do the work, and I also have the real life experience to draw on. Mm -hmm. So I'm competitive in that way. But yeah, I'm also super humble, and I you know I appreciate the opportunities that I get. Was there you was, know, as you as you were saying that I was I was thinking in my head I was like it sounds like Vinny Chase something Vinny Chase would say <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> you know, it's one of those things but where you like I could go home, and I was like yeah, that's what yeah. Vinny did. All right. Yeah, but you know he also didn't. You know he everything came easy in a way where it was like when we started talking about doing that particular show, and it was like we're going to do guys from Boston, and you know the way guys from Boston operated were very different from how those guys operate. Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. they, they would understand people getting into alterca physical altercations and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then they, it was so hard to find a guy who was believable as a movie star that wasn't already a movie star. So right. when we cast him, it was like, okay, this will be kind of like, you know, a composite character of me and Leo and other guys that we know in the business. And mm -hmm. so, but uh, yeah, you always had, the, certainly the, the, the big thing was being loyal and bringing your friends on the ride. My right. buddies are always still with me, the ones yeah. that are still here. You know? And that's, I think, a big uh, difference too, is you bring your friends with you from your regular life before yeah. you blew up and then the guys who will tell you you're being an idiot you look oh, like a moron cut absolutely. it out you're being an asshole because yeah. yeah. if you bring around just the new people yeah, yeah. you know they just no, got the hands on people want to yes you to death yeah. And yeah everybody's trying to hiss themselves to your wagon but you know the the uh, the ente what Entourage did for like my generation, like the amount of cult following that has, mm -hmm. I mean it's crazy. We 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 do a trivia show here, and Entourage questions are usually in it, and like the shit that people, I mean everybody's watched it like ten times over. Yeah. It's, I, I, is it one of the bigger, like one of the more cult classic things that you've done? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's one of those. I don't things even just is cult classic even the right phrase for because it? it's so well, popular. So like, I, I mean, like, 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 like the an audience that's like, like rabid pop like, phenomenon. Yeah, yeah I mean, phenomenon. it started to become this cult thing, and then it became this big, massive thing, right? Yeah. Which then came with it a lot of resentment because it became too successful. Like, people had it. Yep. It was yeah, their yeah. thing. Yep. It was for guys. I mean, we completely ripped off Sex in the City, right? It was like... It was Sex in the City for guys, but thing. it fucking worked. My girl and my wife and all her friends were always talking about they couldn't miss it for anything. And we were like, oh, we wanted to do our own version of that and something for the nailed guys. Nailed it. Fucking nailed it. I also... A funny story for you. Uh, both of my kids uh, were delivered 
after watching Ted 1 and Ted 2. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> when we, we were in the hospital for number one, and it was like trying to find, you know, something light and easy to watch, and Ted was out, we watched it. And then when 2 was coming around, so was the sequel was coming out, and we were oh, like, fuck cool. it, let's run it back again. So Ted <laughs> well, forever intertwined with the birth sorry, of my children. Sorry that uh, the second one wasn't as good as the first. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 maybe it's because That's what Kevin always says about his kids. So it's great. <laughs> 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 You're not supposed to reveal those things. You never, you never. But there is a favorite. You, you never talk about. The you always favorites. do, though. You, you do. never talk about. Nobody's the willing to say it, but you do. You do have it, right? Yeah. Well. <laughs> um, speaking of favorites, my favorite, my favorite movie of yours of all time is Shooter. Mm-hmm. I think Shooter one. is. I think the TV show is fucking unbelievable. I think yeah. Shooter is as good a story as, or movie as one it of is. the greatest names yeah. of a character of all time. Yeah, yeah, Bob yeah, yeah. Swagger. Bob Dude, so Swagger. fucking cool. We were actually we were doing um, on the, the movie podcast here with the other day. We were doing uh, drafting movie characters, but as football players. Uh-huh. And Bob, Bob Lee, Lee Swagger, Swagger is a fucking quarterback out oh, there. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it was crazy because that movie. Uh, you know, we felt like we'd done something special. And then when it came out at the box office, it didn't really do that well. 300 had just came out, which was a big phenomenon. And the studio didn't do a good job of marketing the movie. Mm. But then after the movie came out, when they, you know, the, the big indication that they had dropped the ball was when the movie came out on DVD and pay TV and all that stuff. And it was like successful, like a major blockbuster would be. Dude, you know? I think so. I, then we, and we had so many other series, uh, books in the series that we could have went back and visited again. But by that time, I was like, I'm kind of off to doing other stuff. But we were able to bring it back as a TV show. Yeah. But yeah, they didn't realize what they had had. That was the problem. It's oh. now, I, I think there was a viral tweet. Something this is probably two years ago or so. And like, it was like, what's like the most rewatchable action movie of all time or something like that? And I was like, shooter. And it went like everybody, everybody the agrees. Whole plan yeah, of everybody everybody agrees. Yeah, yeah. I mean, people always come up to me and talk about that character. It's just one of those things. I mean, that happened today when I was um, going through one of these basements in a building. And, you know, the guy came up and asked me to take a picture. And he said, oh my God, I love shooter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, what's your personal of, favorite? Character or movie? Uh, you know what? I always gravitate towards the true stories, you know? So you've got The Fighter, Lone Survivor. Yeah. The most important movie, and I think the best movie that I've ever done is a movie called Father Stew. The trailer's out now. It's mm-hmm. coming out. It's the first movie that I financed. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it's coming out on uh, Good Friday. True story. It's an amazing true story. It's it's almost, you know, too crazy to believe that Fact it is Fact stranger than but, fiction, man. But uh, really excited about it, I think. Uh, and it couldn't be more timely with everything that's going on in the world. So I'd love to, uh, I'll, sh- I'll send you guys a link to the movie Please. and then I'll come uh, back yeah. and talk about it. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's what, good. Was it, uh, I read somewhere when you were training for, or shooter that you hit from like 1,100 yards out or something like that. Is that true? Oh, yeah. I got in... Like within like three days of, of, yeah, of we learning how to do it. Yeah, we were actually at the... That's fucking crazy. We were... Uh, oh, my God. We were at a place called Front Sight in Vegas, which has the... La- one of the large... It had at the time, I think, the largest zip line in the country. Oh, yeah. But you're going down a zip line shooting. So you got the 50 cal. You got all these different weapons. And you're going through all these different progressions with the weapons as you're going down this zip line that starts getting pretty <laughs> fast. That is wild. But, uh, <laughs> but, yeah, but I had the best guys out there they're training me, yeah. you know. But and, still, uh, I mean, it yeah, comes down we lived, we we lived it. You know, I used to before I had kids. If I was doing a movie like when I did Three Kings, I said, okay, mm. where's this character from? Let's focus on the backstory. I would go to Detroit and I'd live there for a couple of weeks and I'd like create a whole backstory. And I would I would become that obsessed with preparing for the parts. So with with Shooter, I mean, we lived up in the mountain for a while. We stayed in this uh this little kind of emergency rescue hut that they had up there instead of commuting back and forth. We did some crazy oh, shit. crazy stuff out there. With all that stuff, like how like what is your level of like confidence in like being like physical? Like with all this training you have for what, what's it been thirty years? Yeah. How, how long have you been doing it? Yeah, like you, I mean, you get trained by all those guys so often. Like, are you? Do you like consider yourself like a fucking badass badass? Well, I feel like I can I can handle myself in in certain situations. Like, I've got a lot of real life experience that a lot of my my peers don't have yeah. that I can rely on, you know, when playing these parts. Mm. So I think the authenticity rings a little bit more true with audiences when I'm playing certain roles. Now that doesn't mean, you know, me with Shakespeare, but with certain roles, yeah. and people say, "Okay, yeah, this guy has really been in this situation before right, or right. knows what it's like to be in a situation like that." So I have that to rely on, which has always been a plus for me. Um, but you know, I mean, I go and do the work too. So I prepare. I don't show up unprepared. I think the one of the more um, 
intense times was preparing for Lone Survivor because I'd already done so much prepare, preparation for Shooter and all the other guys, Ben and um, Emil and, and, uh, and Taylor were already up there working with the SEALs and I was shooting another movie. I just finished uh, Two Guns with Denzel. So I was coming in after Jeez, the fact. Sure. Right. Yeah, no, no, it's yeah. another You've day of the so office. so many fucking sick it's movies. Well, I, was, I was coming in after the fact and then Marcus was just kind of there like, you know what's going on and yeah. we hadn't met yet and we had had a dinner with uh, the families of each one of the guys and it was like it wasn't until I was willing I could show him what I was bringing to the table mm. that he actually opened up to me yeah and like I had to earn his respect sure you know it doesn't matter the resume and all that stuff didn't matter it was like what are you going to do to honor my brothers in Operation Red Wing <laughs> that, that lost yeah. their lives <laughs> and let's like, see uh, it and let's yeah. go <laughs> and then of course you know I mean, now we're, you know, we talk all the time. He just texted me yesterday, he, the other day. He sent me a picture. He's found something on the side of the road. He said, this fell off a truck. And it was a picture of a pelican <laughs> walking through a garden. And then all of a sudden, you know, obviously I knew it was a reference to the other guys. Yeah. Right. And, uh, you know, he, he became yeah. a real friend, but I had to really earn his respect. <laughs> to be able to, to be welcomed into the SEAL community, which is a very tight-knit community, and to earn their respect. Um, but, you know... I've always had a huge appreciation for the military. I mean, I've been to Afghanistan. I visited Afghanistan before I made the film. So I've seen what, what our brave men and women do when they sign up, politics aside, what they're willing to do and sacrifice mm -hmm. for us and for our freedoms. I don't take that for granted. Mm. You know, I encourage everybody else, especially in my business, to make sure that they show the same kind of appreciation and respect yeah. despite the politics. When, or is it... When you're doing a movie like that, that's like more intense than something like a Ted or a comedy, Daddy's Home, whatever. Is it like uh, easier, or do you, you know, do you approach it with the same level of intensity? I just always of approach them with, I like, always approach it the same way. But obviously, when you're honoring people uh, who have been through real life tragedy, especially, you know, it, it, you, you have to handle also, it with yeah. the level of respect and sensitivity that it deserves. You know, there's a big difference too when when you know. You're talking about portraying Navy SEALs. Those guys, they wake up in the morning, they can't wait to get into a gunfight as opposed to an, a family who's going out to root their loved ones on in a, in a race mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, you know, somebody... Yeah, yeah, that's just a whole other thing. Right. Yeah. I, um, I feel like um, you, were, you made the very wise decision at one point to focus on acting. Was there ever a thought to ever Are go you back into music? Saying about my music, <laughs> 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 yeah, hold on. I got one song. I just recorded a song. I'm gonna play this shit for you. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah, you know, I was about to be like, "What are we gonna do uh, with three minutes like, oh, no, no, no. trying to song?" <laughs> <laughs> was there ever a thought to even get? Because you probably could uh, make some money off it. No, no, no. no, charts. no. Here's, like, whatever here, you put here, out is gonna be a hit. Here's the thing. Right? I mean, it was like. Divine intervention, right? I grew up loving the cinema, going to the movies with my dad, but nobody had ever left Boston and where we came from in the neighborhood and went on to become I, I, an actor or in the movies. Mm -hmm. um, so I started out in music. I started out break dancing and stuff in school and kind of getting it. I loved hip hop. And my brother and I started working with Maurice Starr, and then all of a sudden they wanted to make it a kind of you know, version of new edition with white kids from the neighborhood. And I was like, I don't, I can't, A, I can't sing and B, I didn't want to do that. That wasn't my vibe. Yeah. And then they went on to be huge. Wasn't successful. a good vibration. I went in the complete opposite direction. <laughs> yeah, no, it was exactly. And then, <laughs> and then my brother, when he said, okay, I'll produce your record. I was like, this is all I wanted to do. I was like, this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. And thankfully Penny Marshall came to me and was like, Marky, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I only went to the meeting because I wanted to meet Penny Marshall from Laverne and Shirley, and I wanted to meet Danny DeVito from Taxi. And I met a bunch of other people who wanted me, me to be in movies, but they were movies that would have never afforded me an opportunity to have a real career. It would have right. been a one and done. And, uh, and so when I met her and I had that experience with her and Danny and Gregory Hines, who I became very close with, I was like, I can't imagine doing anything else. Right. And then I did the Basketball Diaries, and then I did Fear, and then I did Boogie Nights, and it was just yeah, like, yeah. Seen. <laughs> it was like, yeah, it was like, Crazy. this is all I wanted to do. But I did continue to do music overseas. I produced a bunch yeah, of records for Yeah, you're big in like Germany Friends, or something, Germany, right? yeah. yeah. And then I made a bunch of songs for Soundtrack. For Fear, I did a couple songs. For Renaissance Man, I did like two or yeah. three songs. And I was able to make money making music uh, and touring 
but without having to ever compromise and taking a film role for money. It's a beautiful so spot. So that allowed me to really kind of just work one role at a time to kind of grow as an actor and, you know, establish myself. It is funny, though. I mean, those first couple of hits were fucking big hits, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's funny yeah. you're behind yeah. one of the yeah. most recognizable songs ever, couple really. number one records. But no, thankfully, I found I found Smart. movies and it was like, that. that's what I was supposed yeah, to do. Yeah, good move. Uh, speaking of movies, do you have any comment on the, the rumor from this morning? Um, that uh, you getting threatened online again? I'm trying to. I'm pulling it up, dude. I mean, look, you you don't believe in the internet. I believe in the internet. No, I I know the internet exists. <laughs> Here, so here's a scoop that Scorsese is agreed in principle to direct The Departed too. I never heard that. Is that something you'd do? What would the story even? be? You'd have Let to be the star you. of it. Let me tell the you. You're on the left. Let me tell you what happened. <laughs> well, they talked about that. They talked about a prequel and then a sequel. I went into a meeting with Bill, Bill Monahan, William Monahan at Warner Brothers to pitch the sequel to The Departed. He wanted me to go with him. And uh, this was after it won Best Picture and it was a big success and all that. And uh, let's just say the pitch didn't go very well. <laughs> I didn't, he hadn't really... I, 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 don't think, I don't know what... I mean, swear to God. Well, no, he don't, smashed, well I don't know, think... Be, he don't, didn't really have it. anything flushed out, yeah. but he's the kind of guy who you just trust to go and write something, right? Mm -hmm. So when we were doing... Working on the script for Cocaine Cowboys, American Desperado, we just said, Bill, just go write. Yeah. You know, he wrote The Gambler for me. He's, uh, you know, he's fantastic. So he, he just... He assumed the studio would have the same kind of response that everybody else did. It just kind of let him go figure it out, but... You know, they like to have things well thought out and planned. And so that, that pitch didn't go well. But that's the first time I've heard about it with Marty. Um, you know, who knows? That's the, it's probably the first time I heard it because we made it up. Yeah, we made it up. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, could be, it could be a pretty good one. Yeah, it would oh, be. Oh. Uh, it, focus I'm, on I'm you. Up some bring, trying to bring in another, yeah. you know, like slew of A-listers. Yeah, all those ones are dead. About, bring in that's what he was talking about, like De Niro and Brad Pitt and... You yeah, know, that sort of thing, but fucking make it happen. Uh, Finance I gotta, it. I got to focus on other things. Right? Yeah. yeah, family, kids, and Absolutely. Uncharted. Right. So, <laughs> all right, brother, we really appreciate the time. Uh, unbelievable Uncharted. career. Obviously, Uncharted is out uh, in theaters. It is. Friday. If you like the movies, I like. It is a perfect. Fucking yeah, it movie. really is. It is yeah. cool. Awesome. I very time. very much it's enjoyed it. Time, really man. did. Well, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Anytime, bro. Yeah. Thank you. Listen, if you made it this far into the video... Which is far. Like, no one ever does that on the internet. Like, it's the end. You made it to the end the of the video. The full fucking video you, you watched did. the whole thing. So if you liked it and you watched the whole thing, why don't you subscribe? It means you like us. Click the subscribe button, because if you don't, I'm going to fucking murder John. And I'm going to like it. Kill him with my bare fucking hands. Yeah. And if you weren't sold on this video, there's plenty more. Watch what's next up, and then subscribe. But just subscribe, so I don't have to fucking kill him. Subs well, I don't know. Do what you want, but subscribe. Probably.